What is up, YouTube? Welcome to Pan Fro Games. In today's video, we're going to be talking about ILCA potentially making the next Pokemon game releasing in 2024. And we're going to find out very soon, but there is a lot of hints that may seem like a third party developer, aka ILCA, is making the upcoming Pokemon game. And we're going to dive into what that means and what our expectations should be. And of course, guys, if you like this type of content, enjoy these videos. Please leave a like, subscribe if you're new. I really appreciate it. Consider supporting the channel by joining the Pan Fam and that join channel member button below. So let's just dive right into it. So at the time of recording, we are two days away from Pokemon Day. When you're watching this, it'll officially be one day away from Pokemon Day. And if you didn't know, Pokemon Day is this Tuesday, February 27th. And we'll be watching it live at 9 a.m. Eastern, doing a live reaction to all of the news updates, whether it's the mobile games, the mainline games, the movies, whatsoever. And I'm incredibly excited for this because I do love Pokemon. Now, diving into the first leak here, Pyro. If you don't know who Pyro is, Pyro is a tier one leaker. This guy, I believe, is 11 for 11 on his leaks when it comes to Nintendo Directs, aka he has not gotten a single thing wrong. Now, I do want to bring up this Pyro tweet. It is not necessarily a leak, but his information is good in general, and this may or may not be true, but let's read it. I don't know anything about the Pokemon Presents. While heard of an outsourced Unova-related game, the info was from last year, so it may turn out to be inaccurate. So that is what we know from Pyro, that he's not betting on this, but he is giving us some information and his information has been normally reliable. He is unsure about it, but at least he put it out there in general. And I think that is worth reporting. So this is not a leak. This should be taken with a grain of salt. I'm just sit sharing something I'm aware of. So don't necessarily take this as a big leak or anything, but let's go with that thought process. What if this is reality what if a gen 5 game or you know the game is coming in 2024 and it's not being made by game freak it is outsourced that's gonna bring a lot of interesting comparisons to what we got in 2021 with ilca making bdsp more on that in a moment but i do want to say that pyro also says since we reported the news pyro says i don't think it's worth reporting I'm willing to take the L if it ends up being wrong. I don't think if it is, ends up being wrong, at least he said, hey, I don't think it's right anyways. Or, you know, I'm not 100% certain about this. He just wanted to put that out there. So I want to put this anything against him if he did get it wrong. Now, let's talk about the potential ILCA gener Generation 5 game, right? Because let's be real. There's only been one third-party dev to make a mainline Pokemon game, and that was ILCA. And I do think ILCA will probably get another chance at it because one, they made one, so they have a history. Two, they are the developers of Pokemon Home. So it makes a lot of sense for Game Freak to work with them. It'll make it just easier than finding another third-party developer to make a Pokemon game. I just don't think that's going to happen here. But looking back at what the original concept art of BDSP was, so this is what BDSP was supposed to sort of look like from ILCA, right? So, like, this, you know, open world sort of-ish areas, bigger maps, you know, more lively cities with Pokemon around. You know, this honestly seems like maybe it could have been from a third-person perspective, but, like, from that behind the person instead of, like, a bird's-eye view, right? Similar to more of a Sword and Shield, Scarlet Violet, uh, PLA type of camera style, if you know what those games are. And honestly, this would have been really cool. Now, who knows if that was their original intention, but this is the concept art that was officially made. Now, why did ILCA make BDSP and why was the reception so poor? Like, why did they make it in such a poor state? Well, there's a couple reasons why, if you don't know the history behind it. BDSP was a Unity game. Now, Unity, if you don't know, is a engine. You can make video games in these different engines. Like, another popular one is Unreal, right? Now, Pokemon games are made by Game Freak normally with an in-house engine. I don't know what the name of that engine is, but it's not Unity, right? So BDSP being made in Unity is a whole different thing, aka they got to make the code all from scratch. They can't really convert over the old the code from a previous Game Freak game because it's in a different 
uh, code base and different engine. So it just wouldn't work like that immediately. They will have to change up a lot of things. And coding is hard. Making video games is hard. So reading Michael's tweet here, BDSP is a Unity game. Normal Pokemon games, including Home, are C++ using a custom engine as labeled as Game Freak Lib, GF Lib. BDSP is a Unity game and saves are literally a C-sharp object serialized to disk without specifying offsets, which can change between versions. Adding support means parsing Pokemon from and updating the save, but a C-sharp structure using not specified serialization of multiple versions, they'll have to hand roll a C-sharp Unity object to serialization in a non-Unity code base. It's going to be an enormous hack in every way. So pretty much, they completely were a different code base. It was very hard for these two different types of engines to even communicate with each other, which is why it took so long for BDSP to even get home support because it was two different code bases trying to connect to each other. And it was just an absolute and complete mess. So, okay, so Unity step one, that is a huge reason. Now, what is the other reason why BDSP came out in such a bad state in general? Lutu reports, Masuda re recently confirmed that ILCA's development on BDSP lasted roughly two years long. So the Isle of Armor moves are not fully finished lineup. Okay, so that's crazy. What, if you don't, are you unfamiliar with game development, anything like that? Pokemon Scarlet and Violet was made in three years. Three years to have Scarlet and Violet, and that's how that game came out. Now, two years, removing a year, two years to make a whole video game in from scratch is absolutely insane. Now, AAA video games, essentially gaming with a lot of funds and money, like multiple millions of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, right? Video games take usually about four, five, even six years with ballooning budgets, right? That's what a regular video game takes. And, you know, as you can see, like some like, Breath of the Wild to a Tears of the Kingdom, you can see like how long the development from one game lasted to the other. It takes a long time to make a video game, especially a good video game. Two years is not a long time. Two years is very short. Maybe if you're making like a very tiny sized project in general from some indie game, maybe two years could work for you. But the reality, a lot of games take at least four years in 2024 to make a game and looking forward to more five and six years now, right? Because that's where just game development is. So, okay, they had a bad engine and they were rushed. They were absolutely rushed. Two years is crazy to turn around a project from scratch. Now, lastly, what is the third issue with this? From Zuli the Witch, who's actually a uh, Dark Souls hacker, Elden Ring hacker, which is really cool. Talking about Pokemon stuff here. Do you know how some of the licensed characters in Smash, like Pikmin and Sonic, have really boring alternative colors because they had to strictly adhere to contractual definitions of the character? I'm kind of wondering if something like that happened with the Shino remakes. So pretty much like Nintendo couldn't make Sonic's colors anything crazy or things like that because Nintendo doesn't own the character. So they had to like sign a contract with Sega and be like, Sega's like, hey, you can't do too much crazy stuff of this because this is our IP. We own it. You don't own it. We don't trust you with the IP. And, you know, we got to protect our characters, right? That's normal. A lot of businesses do this, right? And Zuli says down here, BDSP were contracted out to another company, ILCA which is not owned by the Pokemon company, not owned by Nintendo, not owned by Game Freak, not owned by Ke Creatures Interactive, right? I'm curious if maybe ILCA didn't have a lot of artistic license since the chief complaint seems to be that they recreated the originals a little too faithfully, leaving out most quality of life improvements Pokemon had over many years. And speaking of that, as someone who's played the game, they couldn't even put the platinum aspects in the game. Pretty much, there was no Platinum Encounters in regular Wild Grass. They changed up some of the Platinum stuff. It was really a remake of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl with sprinkled on a little bit of the Platinum action, but not even all of it. So that is why ILCA released a poor Gen 4 remake. And if it is ILCA releasing it as Pyro, Sort of said over here that a third party is releasing a Gen 5 game and it is ILCA, then I don't think we're going to be in a great spot. Now, the only benefit is BDSP did release in 2021. It is now 2024. The new Pokemon game would most likely release in fall of 2024. That's essentially three year development cycle on a Gen 5 game. So there is at least one more year 
to it. And I'm sure that one more year is going to be incredibly helpful to polish the game and make the game better. And this is their second bout at it. So they know like what not to do this time around. And hopefully they made a lot of smart creative decisions and game design decisions. And hopefully, you know, program in a way where there's less bugs that a Gen 5 game would be easier on the team so they can better test it out and make sure it's going to be a better and well-tested product at the end of the day. But we're just kind of the wait and see. Hopefully ILCA is not making it in general and hopefully it is this is not true from pyro in general but if it is then i hopefully i'll say learn from their mistakes let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are on a gen 5 remake who do you want to see making it what do you want to see in it or do you just want like a black and white three or do you just want a gen 2 remake we're gonna find out very soon though on this tuesday and like i said we're gonna be doing a live reaction to this pokemon presents so i'll see you there at 9 a.m eastern and of course guys don't forget to leave a like subscribe if you're new i really appreciate it I'll catch you guys next time peace out and have a good one